How heart disease affects women is devastating. It's the number one killer of women. But just as the men in our lives are taking action to prevent and reduce the number of deaths, we want to make sure you're doing enough to protect yourself as well. And since knowledge is power, we want to make sure that you're armed. So here to provide insight into the disease is Dr. Roshana Kulkarni. She's a cardiologist at Somerset Medical Center. Welcome, Dr. Kulkarni. Thank you, Meredith. When we're talking about heart disease, is it different in men and women? Yes. Um, the typical symptoms of heart disease are usually a person will feel chest pressure. They feel it in a center chest. Yes. Typically, it goes down to their left arm, mm -hmm. associated with some shortness of breath, sweating. That is what is described in textbook, and yes. that is what we, as a physician, it's the typical. This is question. what we typically know. All this right. usually builds up with exertion, and gets relieved by rest. Mm. This is typical chest pain, what we call as angina. Okay. Okay. Those are typical symptoms that physicians are aware of. Uh -huh. Patients are also aware of. Sure. But now we know through research that heart disease in women mm -hmm. doesn't typically present this way. Really? How mm -hmm. does heart disease in women present? A lot of times symptoms are much more subtle. A lot of times only thing that a woman will feel is that she's getting short of breath on exertion. She's getting fatigued, just some jaw discomfort, shoulder ache. So symptoms are much, much more subtle oh, and they, atypical. Yeah. And as you can see, that these are very easy to write off. And ignore, sure. And which is typically what happens. A woman usually thinks that, oh, I'm short of breath because maybe I'm overweight, maybe I'm just not getting exercise, maybe I'm out of shape. Mm -hmm. These are symptoms easy to ignore. And that's why um, women are usually delayed in seeking attention. Mm. Also, it's a good idea to know your risk factors. Risk factors are medical conditions that put you at higher risk to have certain conditions. So, what would they be then? Typically, uh, examples. Typically, risk factor for heart disease, mm -hmm. we divide that into two categories. Okay. One is modifiable risk factors. Ah, the ones that, that you can change? That we can change, that okay. we have some, some control over. All right. And the other one is non-modifiable risk factors. The ones that you're stuck with. Yes. So let's, let's see what are the non-modifiable risk factors. <laughs> yeah, what are the ones you're stuck with no matter what? We are stuck with our age, no matter what. Yes. <laughs> as much as we like it. Have you found that found exactly. the yet? All right. But we haven't found that yet. <laughs> so a man over 45. Mm -hmm and women over 55 mm -hmm. are at risk to have heart disease. Okay. okay, so your age is a factor. Yeah, if, if you notice, woman's age coincides with menopause. 55 is typically when most of the women are menopausal. Ah. You lose your estrogen protection, your cholesterol goes up, weight goes up, and women, heart disease in women rises exponentially after menopause, and they quickly catch up with men and pass them. Really? All right. So even though there's that 10-year difference in scale in terms of really keeping an eye on it, women quickly pass men? That's correct. Wow. We talked about age, sex, ethnicity. So those are our non-modifiable risk factors. Mm -hmm. How about we look at the modifiable risk factors? What sure. should we be doing, especially, I'm sure, if the uh, non-modifiable ones are adding up? Modifiable risk factors are something that we can do and if we take care of them our risk of heart disease and stroke cardiovascular disease goes down significantly diabetes is one of the most important modifiable risk factors mm -hmm. just to give you how important it is a woman who has diabetes let's consider all other risk factors to be equal a woman with diabetes is at seven-fold more increased risk to have heart disease than a woman without diabetes. Really? Seven times more? High blood pressure. If you keep your blood pressure low, your risk for heart disease, risk for stroke, goes down significantly. High cholesterol is another one of it. And what I would like to share with you is high blood pressure, diabetes, high cholesterol, this we regard as silent killers. Hmm. Contrary to normal belief, high blood pressure 
does not give you any symptoms. Neither does high cholesterol, neither does diabetes. So how do we identify these? Regular medical checkups and regular blood work can bring out these conditions and then they can be addressed adequately. Mm. And obviously if you've been given medication, you've been diagnosed with these given medication, you need to keep up with that. That's right. That's right. Regular follow-ups are necessary. If a person does 30 minutes of aerobic exercise mm -hmm. five times a week, you reduce your risk of heart disease because if you exercise, your weight is going to be under control so is going to be your blood pressure, your blood sugars, and your cholesterol. And in this situation, what would qualify as aerobic exercise? 30 minutes of brisk walk, mm -hmm. not a leisurely stroll. 30 minutes of brisk walk, biking, swimming. Uh, the, that is good cardiovascular exercise. And another very important risk factor that we have complete control over is smoking. Mm. Okay, so even one cigarette narrows your blood vessel. Mm -hmm and reduces blood flow really to the heart. just one just one cigarette all right so we we've got our risk factors is that is that the last of them mm -hmm. <laughs> all this translates into obesity mm -hmm. so keep an eye on your waistline your keep an eye well. on your weight dr kohani thank you so much for being here today it's my pleasure i appreciate it